everyone, this is Shadow the Rat, and in this video I thought I'd go over rat cages. So there are many specifications for rat cages, including space or height and bar spacing. So I just wanted to go over a few of those in this video, along with go over some cages which are ideal for rats. So the first thing you want to know is that generally we want at least 2.5 cubic feet for your first rat and an additional 2 cubic feet for each subsequent rat. Now remember, rats are very social creatures and they shouldn't be kept alone unless necessary. And because of this, you want any cage that you have for your rats to support at least two rats at a minimum, preferably more. And of course, it's always better to get a larger cage just because your rats are very much going to enjoy the greater enrichment this allows you to give them. Another thing you want to check with any cages you purchase is the bar spacing. Now ideally, your bar spacing on a rat cage is going to be one half inch or smaller. And this is because rats are very flexible little creatures and anything they can fit their head through, they can the rest of their body through. In most cases, some of the fatter rats can't do this, but just saying generally. This means that if you have younger rats or smaller female rats, they're going to be able to squeeze through the one inch bar spacing and escape the cage. Now, if you have older female rats or male rats, most of the time they won't be able to escape, but you always want to check just because it's not always a given, even if you have adult rats, that they can't escape through the bars. I know in my case, I've had six adult females, and out of these six, only one of the rats has been able to escape a one inch bar spacing after a year of age. One thing you can do is get some hardware cloth, which is just this little mesh that you can buy from most hardware stores. I got mine from Lowe's personally, and then you take it and you just cut it into different sheets. You use some zip ties and you can zip tie it to your cage. And the rats can't chew through this, so if you put it on the outside of your cage, they won't be able to get out, no matter the bar spacing. So another thing you want to do is make sure your cage is powder coated. If your cage doesn't have powder coated bars, this means that it's going to absorb your rat's urine and it's going to stick really badly within a few months and then be pretty much unusable. So if you're using a cage that isn't specifically made for rodents, in particular things like bird cages, you just want to check if it's powder coated and if it's not you can actually get it powder coated. I don't know the specifics of this as I've only ever bought rodent cages, however I'm sure you can find it if you look it up online. You also want your cage to be well ventilated. This is why we recommend wire cages over glass tanks or plastic bins. Rats are really susceptible to respiratory issues and because of this you really don't want to put them into a situation where the ammonia can build up really easily like in a tank or in a bin. Rats also like to climb and they really like to be able to climb high so if you have a wire cage this gives you a very easy way for them to get up high not to mention that most climbing accessories like lava ledges for example or chinchilla ledges or bird ropes work ideally in a wire cage just because they often have these little pieces that you can screw on to the outside of the wire cage in order for the item to be stable inside of it. Now tanks and bin cages can make good temporary cages or in the case of bin cages they can even make good travel cages. However, you really don't want to be using these long term. As for commercial cages, you just have to remember that a lot of pet stores are not very well versed in rat care or rodent care in general. And because of this, they might try to sell you rat cages that are just too small or they don't have enough height. So it's always a good idea to do some research beforehand before buying any sort of cage. Now, one thing to be wary of is rat starter kits. Now these kits usually contain one cage, which they say is suitable for rats. They'll also contain things Things like treats or food and wheels or bedding accessories and other things that you will need for your rats however in most cases these things that are included with them are just not very ideal for rats like they might include a seed mix instead of a good lab block and as you probably know most seed mixes at stores tend to be pretty bad quality wise and then often they'll also contain things which just aren't good for them like a wheel that's six inches in diameter that's just not going to work for a rat it's way too small but they'll include it in the cage and they'll say oh yeah, this is fine for them. So yeah, again, it really boils down to you really need to do your research. I saw this in my last video. Some people were commenting that the Living World Rat Starter Cage is just fine for rats. And yeah, I agree that can fit three or four rats pretty comfortably. However, the other stuff in that starter kit is not very good for them. So again, I really think it's a better deal just to go out and buy the cage itself and then buy the accessories just so you're not wasting money on accessories you can't even use for your rats. So now I wanted to go over some ideal rat cages and I have already mentioned one that is the Critter Nation. Now the Critter Nation is the cage that I have and I will have a little video clip on screen right now. And this cage is a perfect example of a great rat cage. It has one half inch bar spacing. The doors can open fully so you can have easy access and easy cleaning. The shelf that comes with the cage has a wire bottom so it doesn't move around and it's very sturdy. Each single unit can hold up to six rats and each double up to 12. And one of the great things about this cage is that you can buy an add-on unit as it's called and this is basically the size of a single 
level critter nation, which means that you can add six more rats to your group. And another good example of a good rat cage is the Martin's rat cages. Now the nice thing about these is that you can actually have certain specifications added for you if you request it in your order. Now the one thing you need to be wary about here is that they do sell some rat cages as permanent housing that really shouldn't be used for anything other than a travel cage. If you want to buy a Martin's rat cage and you want it to be permanent housing for your rats, the smallest Martin's cage you want to buy is the R680, which is otherwise known as the Rat Lodge, and this can house three or four rats, I think, and then each cage above that can house more and more rats. So if you buy the Rat Lodge or above, you'll be perfectly fine using it as permanent housing. And of course, there are lots of other rat cages out there that can work for your rats. They don't even need to be specifically made for rats. You can use things like ferret cages or chinchilla cages, or like I said, parrot cages. You just need to make sure that they fit the recommended requirements. Other good cages are going to be things like ferret nations, which are going to be exactly the same as a critter nation, but they have vertical bar spacing instead of horizontal, and they also have a bar spacing of one inch instead of half an inch. Another good cage is the Feisty Ferret, which is a little bit smaller than a Double Critter Nation. I believe it can hold up to nine rats. Now, one of the things about this cage is that I believe that only one of the door sides open, so it's a little bit strange. You can kind of see it in the picture here. I'm not sure if this applies to all of them. If you have any knowledge about this, maybe you can comment it down below. As for other good cages, you have things like the Ferret Tower or the Katie's My First Home, Pet Home. And both of these cages have one inch bar spacing. So if you have older rats, it's probably fine. If you have younger rats, then you might need to add some hardware cloth to it just to make sure they can't escape. Then you have things like the Frisky Ferret, which also makes a good rat cage, but again, you have one inch bar spacing, so you need to be wary of that. As for more UK or European based cages, there is the Liberta Explora, which is equivalent to the Double Critter Nation, so it can hold 12 rats just like the DCN can. And then you also have the SRS, which is basically the same as the Liberta Explora and the DCN. This cage can hold up to 12 rats, and it's really cool because it has built in bedding guards. So, yeah, you can see there are lots of good rat cage options out there. One one note I do want to make is that if you get something like a Critter Nation and you decide you don't want to use fleece and instead you want to use loose bedding, then something you can do is you can go out and buy a large cement mixing pan. These fit perfectly inside a Critter Nation. You sometimes have to trim around half an inch off the sides. That's what I did. Another option is to buy one of these bass pans for the Ferret Nation. Now I know it says it's for the Ferret Nation, however the Ferret Nation and the Critter Nation have the exact same dimensions, which means that you can use these pans for the Critter Nation as well. I will have the the Bass Pan site linked in the description below for anyone who wants to visit them. So yeah, as you can see, there are lots of different cage options and lots of different ways to modify a cage in order to make it usable for rats. Hopefully this video was helpful to anyone out there who's trying to figure out what cages make a good rat cage. That's really all I have for you guys today and I hope you guys enjoyed. If you would like more rat care or rat training tips, feel free to visit my website at www.rattricks.weebly.com, link in the description. Other than that, I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope to see you next time. Bye.